Hey guys, I'm Doug. And I'm Pat. Welcome back to the Doug and Pat Show. Obviously, from the intro of the piece today, we are going to be doing pickups from Germany. We um, got an email from a guy who owns a store in Berlin. His name is Eden. Um, and his store is called Checkpoint Guitars, which is really close by where the Checkpoint Charlie thing was in, uh, in Berlin. It's, did, huh. did you go in there when they had the crossing there? You could go from West Berlin, which was the American sector, into East Berlin, that was the Russian sector, and the checkpoint that, that you went through for the Americans was Checkpoint Charlie. Huh. Yeah, and he has a music store there. We're running some video of what that looked like. Really cool store. Had some really nice guitars. Anyway, so Eden had uh, contacted us and asked why we hadn't done anything on German pickups, which I think was a pretty good question. It's uh, slightly ironic that the guitar that we started uh, the whole show with, besides the uh, two old ones, was this one, the Heritage. This guitar came with German pickups in it, which were Schaller pickups. Yeah. It also had Schaller uh, hardware on it. And Schaller is also known for making other things like these, which mm -hmm. are yeah really precision stuff. Uh, this guitar is a 94, so the Schaller pickups were made then but you know they they didn't really sound very good so when eden suggested that we uh, check out some of the german ones he backed this up by saying i will pick out three of what i think are the major players and i'll send them to you guys and um and you can check them out which worked out pretty well because i was also planning on being in berlin in september which we'll get into our our summer of traveling, which is in case people were wondering what we were doing, we were traveling a lot. And Pat's going to get that. into his very cool travels that he had towards the end of the show. So anyway, um, we got the three pickups and we did um, the demo. So we're going to do the demos on them the way we do and comparing them, of course, with Oscar the Beast, which is the 58 Gold Top Les Paul. The uh, uh, three pickups that we're going to do are um, Klopman. How do you like my German accent? I like that. Not, not that like bad. That. Yes. Uh, Amber pickups. I think you have a daughter named Amber. I so do. That was easy to remember. Mm -hmm. And the uh, Heusel. See, it has a little umlau over the... Uh, a little what? Uh, huh? A little what? Um, how? Um. <laughs> uh, so those three... Two little dots. Yeah, two little dots. But dang, you know, I was th it would really be cool because we're reaching out internationally again. The Doug and Pat show is we ought to get somebody that's a German speaker that could translate some stuff for us. So that yeah, what do you think? Good luck. What do you think? And then we could send that message to our German fans uh, and guitar players in Germany in their native language. I huh? I think we should try and find one. There might be somebody in the neighborhood here. You don't know anybody right off. I don't. I think it might be a little searching. Why don't we just give it a shot? Let's see what we can come up with. Let's do it. Let's go. Sprechen Sie Deutsch? What the f do you want? Sprechen Sie Deutsch? What the f do you think you are? This is America! Fräulein, sprechen Sie Deutsch? Leave me alone. Uh -uh. Sorry. We haven't found a German guy yet. Well, we can't quit now. How about just one more? One more house. Th that's what they all say, one more. Okay. That's what I'm saying we'll try to you. One more. I'm saying one more. One more. Can one. we do one more? We'll do one more. Let's go. Hello. Sprechen Sie Deutsch? Ja klar, wunderbar. Ich spreche super schlecht Deutsch. Spreche ich auch Deutsch? Komm, lass uns Kaffee Let's trinken. go! So, uh, Hank, thanks for thanks for coming on the show. It's just it's just so great. Pat, yeah, no. I, I think that what we should do is is uh, because we've got a real German guy here. Let's let's tell him that we're in Berlin. Berlin, komisch.
Wir sind hier in einem kleinen Raum über der Garage Berlin. Was sind das für Typen? Was ist hier überhaupt los? Okay, so let's say we've already done that, right? Well, thank you, Hank, for coming on the show. It's really an honor. Are you a real German guy? Warum reden die so komisch? Und was sind überhaupt diese Pupsdinger? Ja klar, yes, uh -huh. of course. Uh -huh. So, we would like to ask you to translate for us to uh, say to our German brothers and sisters in the guitar world in German. I would like to do that. Great, great. What, wait, why are you talking so slow and he's, so loud? Well, he's German. He's, I have to get him to under... Okay. I need to get him to understand it. Okay. 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 So, this is important stuff. Hank, if you could translate this into German for us. Sure. Welcome our German brothers and sisters to the Doug and Pat show. Willkommen Brüder und Schwestern zu Pat and Doug show. This show is about pickups that are made in Germany that we are going to test in our usual Doug and Pat fashion. Die heutige Folge geht um uh, aus Deutschland hergestellte Pickups in der uh, üblichen Manier von Doug and Pat. And lastly, we we really don't think that the Germans are really capable of making a pickup that sounds as good as the American pickups, but I guess we'll find out. Also sie sind ziemlich sicher, dass die deutschen Pickups richtig richtig gut sind, weil man ja weiß, Mercedes, super Engineering und ja, lass mir uns überraschen. Thanks so much, Hank. Ja, gerne. Gerne. Auf ein. Tschüss. Was that great? Let's start the comparison now with Oscar, the 58 Les Paul. Um, not to be confused with the statue that they give of Best Movie Awards also known as Oscar. Or the Best Guitar Award. Best Guitar Award. But, Oscar, we'll start hey, with this. Hey, 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 hey. What? Why was the bicycle laying on its side? <laughs> oh, man, Pat, it's too early. Okay, hold it. Um, because it didn't have any PAS? <laughs> Why? Because it was too tired. <laughs> you get that off the until then. No, I got it. Lucas, seven-year-old grandson. Really? He one. made that up? Made That's that. pretty funny. I wonder if he got it off the intro web. No, probably not. He probably just made it up because mm. he's a smart guy. Those kids. Those yeah. kids are way smarter than what we used to be. Well, Pretty much everybody's pretty much smarter than what we used to be. Neck pickup on Oscar. Then we'll go to the bridge and then we'll go to both of them.
Let's do both. We'll have the uh, treble pick up on 10. Tones are all the way up. We'll back the neck pick up down to about five. So it just kind of has a little more body to it. That's the benchmark that we're going to start comparing the great German pickups to. Oscar. First up is going to be the pickup called the Heusel. It looks like Hausel for us Americans and English speakers, but it's got these two dots over the A, as Pat mentioned, and that is called a... Um, yeah. Umlau. Yeah. This particular set that we got are potted. I think they make them unpotted also. But it's interesting because... Um, in a real PAF, of course, they're not potted, right. but we've run into some good, pretty good sounding pickups that have been potted. And uh, so we withhold uh, judgment on that. This one also has a four conductor wiring. That's, that's an option. You can get it in the standard braided wiring. And it also has a short leg. Short legs are, uh, they, you could fit them into a guitar that's thinner, like a SG or yeah. something. Um, and that's also an option, I guess. But the ones we have are, are that right here. I like I like the long leg. You prefer the long leg. Long leg. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. Yeah, it's easier to put them in, I think, for in less pulse. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, they also have the age cover, so I think when you go to the website, which I'm running underneath there, you'd be able to uh, go to their website and check them out. So these are going to be the hoistles. Let's start with the neck pickup, and then we'll work through the treble pickup, and then we'll do both pickups on there. We're going to try and play some stuff that is, uh, you know, the kind of the classic stuff like the Beano uh, album, Clapton thing, and other miscellaneous things that sound kind of bluesy. So we bring out the, hopefully, the sound of the PAF twang that's got going on there. You can do it. Hey, let's try. You know you can. Want to try it? Yeah. Okay. Neck. dirty you know i mean we're playing it dirty we're not going to be strumming it and playing uh, 11 spoonful songs because that's for uh, somebody else to do <laughs> yeah. bridge <laughs> Thank you. 
It sounds like it has a lot of that overtone it does. of those uh, classic sounds from where we're sitting. It really is uh, uh, quite alive, which is interesting for a potted pickup. Uh, let's put it on both pickups. I'm going to have the volume on the treble pickup all the way up, and then I'm going to blend in the neck pickup, kind of the same sort of things briefly, like right yonder. <laughs> swap pickups next up are amber these are the what the model are these these are the spirit of 59 that's a catchy name it is yeah i'm looking at the cover just a bit as i look at it i noticed that it's in german can't you read that i can't you speak germany germany <laughs> don't you speak yeah german? yeah obviously we both do that's right we're we're we're, we're an international yeah. Sprocketsy We're going to let it go because we're just, you know, some people would begin to think that we're sort of like buffoons, which I don't know. Maybe maybe it's true. Um, these guys are, um, they also are short leg and they, uh, they're not potted. They have aged covers on them, but, you know, they're really, really good looking covers, like yeah. really good looking covers, like almost... Might be even in there with the uh, throwback covers. H nickel, they look really, really great. We took a quick reading of these. The bridge is about 8.3. The neck is about 7. We'll uh, double check those readings and see if they may be accurate, may, maybe not. have to say these pickups are uh, pretty active. They actually sound pretty good. So let's give them a listen. I'm going to try. <laughs> Obviously, we're playing on the neck pickup. I'm going to turn it up all the way like that. trouble.
Let's go to uh, both. Great looking covers on that. These yeah. are almost like as good that. as the throwbacks, which yeah. really are the benchmark for killer. And these are not killer. potted either, right? Yeah, they they don't look potted. There's no wax on them, and they don't say anything on the website about them being potted. This the for us sitting right here, this thing has a really amazing overtones well, to it. How how would you know what the website says? You speak German? Um, yeah, oh. I do. The thing I know how to speak is. Google says, would you like to translate this page? And I say, yeah. I, mm -hmm. And then it translates it for you. I, it's great. Sprechen Sie Deutsch? No. Ah, nein, sprechen Sie Deutsch. <laughs> don't get him going, people. You would just say, don't write in. I, don't say, I, I, I would watched, like to hear Pat know, speak German I, I a little watched, more. Um, what was the show with Colonel Clink? Hogan's uh, Heroes. Hogan's Heroes. Yeah, yeah, I yeah. Watched, see, I watched that show, and I paid attention. Yeah. Anything come to mind that you remember that's really, really something you remembered? Nine. Consider yourselves lucky. They sound really good from where we're sitting. Super. Nice. Next up are the Klopmans. Um, this is the uh, um, deluxe set. When we got it from Eden, it came with two vintage bumblebee caps. So there's a, a charge for those, like a pretty significant one, but they're, it's, they're available without the bumblebee caps also. Um, long leg. On them. Also, Eden said that these may be the most popular of the German humbucking pickups. Not to really? influence you at all on that. But I say the, the bumblebees are old. Yeah, the original ones. ones. Wow. Yeah. Uh, I don't know if they make a wiring harness. You'd think if they're going to offer bumblebees, they would uh, put them in a wiring harness. But yeah. we're not here to discuss that today. We're here to discuss. Um, what are we here to discuss? Pickups. Klopman. We're again, we're going to go to the neck pickup, then we're going to go to the bridge pickup, and then we're going to go to both pickups on these guys. Potted? They don't appear to be potted. They appear to be unpotted. <laughs> Was was that one of that 
one of them there, Billy Gibbons, little lick thing going on? I don't want to say his name. Did uh, did he call you when he came to town? I do not want to talk about Billy G. I, don't, I mean, excuse me, I do not want to talk about the one that will remain nameless. He's passed his opportunities by um, time and time again, and I am sick of waking so up in the middle of the night. you know where his career is going to go. <laughs> hmm. Mm-hmm. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Go to um, both pickups. Bridge pickup is on ten. Um, the neck pickup is on about seven or eight or so. <laughs> Has bumblebee caps in it. Then about four. Little darker. Interesting. Hmm. Old. Yep. They look old. It comes with a pickup uh, in the packaging. It's called the deluxe set of it, which I'm running under the screen right there. Mm. Yeah. So that's all three of the pickups. Um, I had a favorite. I did too. Yeah. Yeah. Too. Um, we don't usually venture into this too much, but. Uh, we think that the Amber uh, Spirit of 59 in the room that we're in got really close to Oscar. It had this high-end um, pick attack thing. It had some stuff going on there. I I, I know it's difficult um, to get a recording that really reflects the way it sounds in the room. It's almost impossible, if not impossible, especially since even though we do record on Pro Tools, we use 414 microphone and a 609 microphone. We're not using any compression or any EQ. We can record through the 65 Vox AC10 SRT, through two 1965 Celestian Alnico Silvers, and the, the, that's what we use all the time. Um, those pickups really sound exceptional. 
thought they sounded great. Yeah. yeah. So what, when I was in Berlin, bought the T-shirt there. It's trying to be obvious. And when I, were you there? I was there in September. I had an opportunity to get together with uh, Wolfgang, who uh, makes these pickups, and uh, we chatted about him a little bit. We could use this just also as a little bit of a conversation, as crude as it is, because we did it with my phone, um, about just talking about pickups with guys in different countries. You know, the, the, the whole excitement about the PAF thing and all that is really international. A lot of you have uh, mentioned more than once that we seem to have a lot of pauses in between shows. <laughs> Some people have implied it had to do with uh, a parole board, but I don't think that's true. But well, hospitals, <laughs> <laughs> insurance companies. Yeah, actually, right. this this last summer we were actually doing a lot of traveling. Yeah. Pat had a really cool road trip, and you ended up all the way down in Nashville. Where'd you go? Went down. Well, you know, Crocodile Dundee went on a walkabout. You went to Australia? No, no. Oh, okay. We went on a drive-about. Jumping about. the gun. Drive-about. We jumped in the car, my wife and I, and we drove 7,000 miles. Just wow. And the places that I wanted to go to, we, we did get to. Uh, Rainbow Music down in in uh, Arizona. We went to um, uh, down to Austin, listened to some music, went to a bunch of stores there. Went to um, up to Songbirds. Uh, the museum in Chattanooga, Tennessee, and I highly recommend that. What's That's, there? Man, one of everything that you'd think of uh, as far as electric guitars. The guitars that, that we're into, anyway. Um, uh, just a ton. They had, they had six Sunburst Les Pauls on display and another wow. 20, I think you said 28, that they keep in a warehouse, and they rotate them in and out of there. Oh, it sounds like Bonham um, Moss's house. <laughs> yeah, it sounds... All kinds of stuff, anyway, and some one one offs and different things. Uh, went from there uh, over to to uh, Nashville, and spent the day with George Gruen, and um, saw his own personal collection and his reptile collection. And uh, you know, <laughs> George Gruen. George Gruen. Wow, he's he, like an elder statesman of vintage instruments. He's the if man. You guys, uh, guys, researched that for a long time in Guitar Player Magazine. He had a column called Rare Bird. He was really a huge expert on it and, and, uh, and marketed a lot of those guitars. Been doing it forever. and uh, How much time did you spend down there? Just in, in Nashville? No, or with George Holt? Groen. Oh, just the day. Just wow, the day. Wow, really? But, um, it, it was real, really neat. He's, you know, he also sings and plays quite well. Plays banjo, plays um, guitar. And um, he's, he's uh, not only really talented, but he's just super knowledgeable about it everything guitar and not just electric guitars i mean he's he's martins and just yeah. everything mandolins everything i mean yeah that's exactly right he's, he's he's probably if not the most knowledgeable top two or three that's right yeah. and he, he's you know sold guitars to everybody that's anybody um except you yeah and um yeah i even got a guitar from him Really? Yeah, I did. Yeah. I'm the only one. Yeah, you, you're it. I'm the so. last one. I'm holding out. But anyway, it was it was quite a trip, and um, the the whole thing, like I said, was seven thousand miles, and and pretty much covered everything that that I wanted to see. You see any big stars? I did. Um, uh, we went to a club called in Third and Lindsay. Is this in Nashville? This is in Nashville, and saw uh, the Time Jumpers, and that's Vince Gill's. Oh, and so we fresh off the road with the Eagles. Yeah, yeah, yeah. See, you know, we, we it, it was a great club, and and uh, they he sounds so good. He plays and and sings like a bird. He does. And um, we went back stage and got to meet him and, mm. and chat with him for a bit. He and Andy uh, Andy Reese, who's the uh, the other guitar player in the band, I thought it was real cool. They were playing. Um, uh, Andy Reese was playing a 59 dot neck 335, a sunburst one, and of course Vince had to play dot neck blonde 59 335. Whoa. In a club. In a club. Yeah. They, yeah. Man. Through, through a Those couple things old are not amps. cheap. Oh, no. The blondes are worth three times if, at least what the sunburst ones That's right. Wow. That's right. At least. So they had them on stage. 
Had they probably had them guarded, and when they walked off stage, they no, took them with them. No, leaned them up against their amplifiers and <laughs> took, took a break. <laughs> so really, yeah. No, uh, I might have to visit that club well, to see I, when they're playing. I might have a picture too. Like those. a smoke bomb go off in the corner. No, I'm oh, going to edit that out. That'd be horrible. <laughs> That'd be horrible. Wow, it's quite a quite how, a trip. How far east did you get? Just as far as Chattanooga. Yeah, that's um, you know in the eastern part of Tennessee, but not quite as far east as what you got. No. I kept going. And where did you go? I ended up uh, after, um, went to Amsterdam, Berlin, went to... Um, now that's not in the United States. That's not America. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, Budapest, or Budapest as it's spelled, but there they say Budapest. Okay. Um, Prague, uh, Vienna, all over, just kind of all over the place. It was great. What was your favorite place? Berlin. Berlin. Wow. Yeah. I love the shirt, I have to say. All right. It was really, really great, really great experience. And we will be doing stuff like that all the time. Yes, we will. Did you run into any uh, problems language-wise? Or I know you speak many languages. I speak many languages, mainly the ma language of love. <laughs> <laughs> and how's that working for you? Oh, it's not working that <laughs> well. Um, we found that we could get by with our English almost everywhere pretty well. They're a highly educated crew the, over the there Euro. in the Eurozone. And the food? Food, great, great. Guys need to travel, get out there and meet guitar players. And uh, there's lots of them out all over the world. That would be when you're not going to the Doug and Pat Show website where you can buy uh, styling um, T-shirts, mm -hmm. long sleeve, short sleeve, large logo, small logo, get the hat and check out the shows all kinds of fun stuff you can always email us at the doug and pat show at gmail.com so uh hey guys thanks for watching the show i think that's about all we have today isn't that's it? all i got man yeah, that's about it right. okay we'll see you next time bye bye So tell me about the magnet. Tell me about the research that you did, which by the time the show comes out, the other one will be out anyway. Um, we found out um, by measuring magnets on an electronic basis that um, Gibson used between um, 1953 and 1960. Um, Probably only an equal four magnets um, because we did comparisons with um, an equal two group and modern an equal four and modern an equal five and the old magnets um, would only go with the an equal four group. Is it possible that? It could have been an A5 magnet that was degaussed a little bit no, over time. Definitely not. Okay, because that's somebody would ask that. Question. You can get um, close to the Nico 4 if you degauss on the Nico 5. Uh -huh. In the Spirit 59s that we have on the show, you are using an A5 in that magnet? Yes. Okay. And then now you told me that you are now the ones that are available now. You're using an A4. Yes, a special made on Nico 4, um, a special alloy, <coughs> um, which is, uh, has a little bit more bass response. Just so there would be a little bit of a tone difference between the ones that we did demo. On. Very slightly, yes. Okay. So then you, is the bass response in both pickups? Yes. Okay. Just a little bit richer the tone. Okay. When we talk about that, it's, um, it sounds as if it, it, this, this is a, a big thing, but uh, it's just a small percentage. How did that come about? Why did you do that? Oh, we are curious. We uh, 
try to find out things all the time, small puzzle pieces, um, go one comes to another. And, um, I work together with a, uh, what is the word? Physicist. Physicist. Like in uh, the Big Bang Theory, everyone, the TV show. A person that does physics. Yeah. A physicist, and he's also a musician. <coughs> Ah, and um, he analyzed pickups and magnets, uh, has been analyzing for years. And, um, and when I came in, when, um, um, I brought in all the experience I had and we put that together and found out that, um, that um, Gibson most likely always used a nickname on four magnets um, for that special period of time, 53 to 60. The 90 was introduced in 1946, so between 1946 and 1953, we don't know um, if um, they probably used uh, a Nico 2, maybe. Um, we will find out um, in the future. But um, in the 60s, uh, it's definitely the short magnets are not all an equal five. They, uh, when they change from long to short magnet, they first use an equal four still. And then they, they were a few A2s. And from the mid 60s, they started with the bring in an equal five. And then it was only an equal five. We can hear when we were demoing your pickup that it has an amazing top-end response like this. Oddly, the only pickup we've ever heard that is a retro pickup, not an old pickup, that sounds like that. It made a new guitar sound like that. Yeah. We find that to be a significant thing. Is there anything that you did on purpose that made that pickup sound? We want to know what's going on here in Germany with these guys making this stuff. Huh? Huh? Who is it? Does, do you think they want to know? <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. And this is just a total stranger that stopped by. So anyway. Well, there's um, several things that come together. The, the bridge pickup is um, very slightly overwhelmed, not much. So it still keeps the clarity. Um, we try to... Um, wind the coils um, as loose as possible um, and um, for the neck pickups um, I do um, an extra portion clarity in it but I cannot tell you how I do that. What? <laughs> plus, plus we use... It is very clear. We used to use um, your um, test pickup is still with a legal 5, but they are degaussed a certain amount um, to, to cut this hard and hard heights and make them smoother. They sound more acoustic than more acoustic like. Um, the looseness of the coil, we found that it's not microphonic at all, and its pickup mm -hmm. is not hot. Right, it's not microphonic. And so there must be at least some aspect of, of winding a coil loosely, but not too loose, because pickups can be very microphone. My experience is that this is the, the single parts, uh, they start to vibrate, uh, not single, single windings. The whole parts, like the, the magnet of the space or the base plate or the, the whole bonnet. Yes. If um, they are uh, being put together properly, they, they don't need that. Put, it's G put German proper, engineering. Put things properly together. <laughs> yes, I, I've heard of it. As simple yeah. as that. <laughs>